بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعين أما بعد uh, Hello my uh, students Welcome to my uh, first lecture in our course Financial Management and Investment with you Professor Dr. Tamer Mohammed Shahwan Professor of Financial Management, Head of Business Administration Department, Faculty of Commerce, Zagazig University. Uh, our uh, course started by chapter one. In this uh, chapter, we are going to discuss the rule of managerial uh, finance. The following outlines will be covered. The first part, we are, go we are going to discuss what is financial management. Second, the goal of the firm. Number three, organization of the financial management. Number four, forms of business organization. And finally, financial markets and the different types of financial markets. After studying uh, this chapter, you should be able to, number one, explain what is the financial management. Objective number two, you must be able to describe financial management in terms of three major decisions area that confront financial manager. Objective number three, you should be able to identify the primary activities of the financial manager and why the role of the financial manager to be so important. Objective number four, describe the legal forms of business organization. And finally, you must be able to describe the nature of the principal agent relationship between the owners and managers. Number one, what is the financial management? Financial management, it is a process that is concerned with acquisition, financing, and the management of assets with some overview in mind. We could refer to it, it is a process that is concerned with investment decision, finance decisions, and the asset management decision to maximize the market value of owner's equity. Accordingly, financial uh, management is addressing the following three questions. Question number one, what long-term investment should the firm engage in? We refer to it by investment decision or capital budgeting decision. Second uh, decision that is mainly concerned by financial manager, how can the firm raise the money for the required investment? This is financing decision or capital structure. Uh, third, how much uh, short uh, term cash flow does the company need to pay its uh, expenses and the bill? And we refer to it by asset management decision or working capital uh, management. And in general, financial uh, management is concerned with three basic decisions. Number one, capital budgeting decision. Number two, capital structure decision. Number three, asset management decision. Sometimes we refer to it by working capital management. Let us uh, try to reflect uh, those three uh, decisions using uh, the balance uh, sheet model of the firm. As you see, this is the balance sheet of the model. According to accounting, uh, we have a total value of assets must equal a total firm value to investors. And we could refer that 
according to balance sheet uh, identity, the total value of assets equals total value of liabilities of loss owner equity. As you see, uh, if you give a look for a, um, a left-hand side uh, of a balance sheet, total uh, value of asset, uh, it uh, consists of current assets and fixed asset. Fixed asset can be uh, classified into tangible asset and intangible asset. If you give a look for right-hand side of uh, the balance sheet, uh, we have the total liability plus owner equity. Total liability can be divided into current liability and long-term uh, debt. And we have shareholder equity. If we would like to reflect the basic three decisions, using the balance sheet model of the firm, it will be as follows. As you see, the first decision is capital budgeting decision. Capital uh, budgeting decision or investment decision actually is concentrated in uh, the right, uh, uh, in the left hand side of a balance sheet, uh, exactly in the fixed asset part. So the fixed asset uh, part, this uh, will represent what long term investment should the firm engage in. So if you are interested to investigate the uh, nature of capital budgeting decision of a specific firm, directly you must give a look for the fixed asset to determine what long term investments should the firm engage in. Second uh, type of decision, which is the capital structure decision. Uh, the capital structure decision is mainly concentrated uh, on the right hand side of, uh, you, uh, of your balance sheet and this uh, will uh, be represented uh, by some of current uh, liability, long term debt uh, and shareholder uh, equity. Those uh, three subparts it will enable the organization to determine how the firm can raise the money for the required investment. So if you would like to investigate the capital uh, structure of a specific firm, you must concentrate uh, on this uh, side uh, to determine how can the firm raise the money for the required investment. Uh, such a type of decision as we will see, it is very complex uh, decision uh, because actually uh, many factors could affect on this uh, decision. Number uh, two, we have different uh, sources of alternatives and uh, one of the main duty of the financial manager is to assess the cost related to each one of uh, those uh, uh, sources uh, in a way to determine which one is the best and which one is the most proper uh, for the investment requirement and for covering such a type of investment. Third type of decision, it's called the net working capital investment decision. As you see, net working capital equals a, a difference between uh, current assets and uh, current liabilities. And uh, in this matter, uh, if you are a financial manager, uh, you must try to have a positive uh, sign of net working capital. Positive uh, sign of net working capital, it means that uh, the current assets of uh, this firm is able to uh, cover the current liabilities. This means that this firm has uh, enough uh, liquidity over a uh, short term uh, to cover uh, its uh, uh, current expenses. And in this way, uh, we could describe that 
this firm is healthy over short term. However, if the net working capital has a negative uh, sign, this means that the current assets of uh, this firm are not enough to cover its uh, current liability. This means that this firm is facing liquidity uh, problem which will affect on trust of investors and uh, if uh, we didn't control such a situation it could be exaggerated leading to the bankruptcy of your firm therefore net uh, working capital investment uh, decision is very uh, important uh, to determine how much short-term cash flow does a company need to be at the base? Uh, otherwise, uh, the company uh, has uh, a liquidity uh, problem and could affect on its existence in the uh, future. By, uh, yeah, as you see, by the end of this bar, uh, when you are studying financial uh, management, you must be careful about three uh, basic type of decision. Number one, uh, which is a capital budgeting decision. Number two, capital structure decision. And finally, uh, network and capital or asset management decision. This is very important for any financial management. As you see, capital structure. Capital uh, structure be a very important role in determining what we call the value of the firm. Yeah, if you are interested uh, to uh, determine a value of the firm, capital structure of this firm play a very important role in this matter. And we could describe this uh, capital as a certain type of buy, uh, Abbey Pie, Mr. Fatir Kufer. This Abbey uh, Pie, we refer to it as the capital uh, size of your firm. Uh, as you see, this is uh, a specific size of a specific firm. This is a specific capital structure size of a specific firm. And one of the duty of the financial management is trying to maximize and to increase this uh, uh, size of the buy. This is one of the main duty of the financial management. So if you would like to be a financial manager, if you are uh, taking a position uh, with the firm with a specific uh, capital structure, one of the goal of the financial manager is to increase the size of uh, this uh, buy. Also, one of the responsibility of the financial uh, management is to determine structure of this capital. The, so the capital uh, structure decision can uh, be considered as how best to size up this uh, buy. And if, for instance, in, in, in a specific organization, some organizations, they could have 50% debt and 50% equity. In others organizations, they uh, could uh, have, for, for instance, 25% debt. 75% uh, equity and other type of organization, they have 30% equity and 70% uh, debt. As you see, we have different ways to determine uh, the structure of your capital. In this way, one of the main duty of the financial manager is to answer the following question. What is the size of your capital, uh, your capital and how you are going to size up this capital and what is the structure of uh, this uh, capital. You must uh, be um, careful and you must take this in your consideration is a way of sizing up your capital. It will affect on uh, uh, size of your capital and then this is one of the capital decision uh, matters. You, in the capital structure decision matters, you are or you must be keen uh, for what is the size of this capital structure and how you size up uh, 
uh, the cavity. Uh, all of these things are very important and must be considered by any uh, financial uh, manager. As you see, uh, the financial manager, uh, he is interested to create value, to create value, to maximize uh, a value of your uh, firm. You, as a financial manager, you uh, should be able to make smart investment decision that we refer to it by habitat uh, budgeting decision. Number uh, two is to make smart financing a decision or what we call cavity uh, structure decision and uh, number uh, three uh, you are must be concerned with the management of current assets then with that fixed asset in other words you must be keen to create a positive networking capital and this is very important for many uh, different types of organization that you must give attention uh, to a current assets as well as your fixed assets and you must be keen to have a positive networking capital. Uh, let us uh, give you uh, a small uh, hint about uh, different career uh, opportunities in finance. Uh, of course, uh, yani, uh, when you would like to work, you are going to work in a specific type of financial service. Financial services, it's the area of finance that is considered with designing, delivering of advice and financial uh, products to individual uh, business and government. And this uh, will include uh, uh, different career opportunities, uh, including banking, personal financial planning, investments, real estate insurance. You, by you, if you are interested to study finance and if you are interested to work in financial service, uh, we have different career opportunities. In, in this uh, career opportunities, financial, uh, managerial finance is concerned with the duties of the financial uh, manager working in a business. Uh, one of the main responsibility of financial uh, manager is to administer the financial affairs of all types of uh, business, whatever if this is a private firm or a public firm, if it is a large firm or a small firm, or whether this is organization profit seeking or this is not for a profit, whatever the type uh, of a financial, whatever the type of your firm, uh, the financial manager administer the financial uh, affairs of this firm. And uh, this include many uh, tasks. One of these uh, tasks, number one, is developing uh, a specific financial plan or budget. Yani any uh, firm, uh, at the beginning, you must try to develop a financial plan or budget. Also, to extend uh, credit to customers. Uh, number three is to evaluate uh, proposed large expenditures and also for raising money to fund the firm operations. All of these things are different uh, tasks uh, that the financial uh, manager uh, is uh, responsible uh, for. Uh, one of these tasks is developing financial plan, extending credit to customers, evaluating proposed large expenditures, raising money to fund the firm uh, operations. The importance of uh, managerial finance and uh, financial managers actually uh, increased uh, due to some uh, events, uh, existence of a global financial crisis and uh, subsequent responses by governmental uh, regulators, increasing global uh, competition, 
rapid technological change, all of these uh, factors increased the importance and the complexity of the financial manager duties. You, as a financial manager, you must aware that you are going to work in very complex and dynamic environment, many factors affecting uh, this type of uh, environment, and this increased uh, the importance and complexity of the financial manager uh, duty. For instance, uh, when we say globalization, yes, we are living in a globalization era where the world becomes a small village. Increasing such a concept yet to increase demand for financial experts who will be able to manage cash flow in different uh, currencies and to protect against uh, the risk that is natural arise from international transactions. Because, for example, uh, you are not uh, working in a local environment, but you are working in a globalized environment uh, with different uh, countries, with different uh, currencies, with different types of risks. One of the main duty of the financial manager is to how we manage such a situation when we are doing uh, international transactions. Uh, therefore, um, uh, studying uh, finance and uh, be involved in uh, tasks of financial managers led to increase the importance of some certificate in finance. And uh, actually, we have different uh, types of professional certification in finance. The first and the very famous uh, type is Chartered uh, Financial Analysts, CFA. This is one of the very famous certificate in finance. This type of certificate is offered by the CFA Institute, uh, where uh, uh, it's mainly concentrate on investment side of finance. Second uh, type of uh, professional certificate in finance, it's called CTB, Certified Treasury Professional. Uh, in this uh, type of program, it uh, requires students to pass a single exam that's focused on knowledge and the skill needed for those working in a corporate uh, treasury department. If you are uh, interested or if you are intended uh, to work in a corporate uh, treasury uh, department, I think such a type of certificate, CTB Certified Treasury Professional, is very important for uh, conducting such a type of task. Another uh, type of uh, certificate, which is Certified Financial Planner. Certified Financial Planner, CFEB, uh, it's required uh, from uh, you to pass about 10 hour exam covering a wide uh, range of topics related to personal financial planning. Uh, the first part of this lecture, we covered different types of decisions related to financial management. Then we explain uh, different professional uh, certificates that increase your ability to work as financial manager. The third part of this lecture, we are going to discuss a very important topic, which is the goal of the firm, the goal of the firm. Um, if someone is asking you as a financial manager, what is the goal of the firm? Or what actually your intention to do for a specific firm? Uh, in uh, last uh, decades, uh, actually in 1950s in America, 
if someone is asking the financial manager in American uh, organization, what's your goal for the firm? Directly, he is going to say, my goal is to maximize profits, profit maximization. How is the profit maximization? By maximizing a firm earnings after taxes. But after a while, this goal is turned to a new one, which is maximizing the current value per share of the existing stock. And finally, most of financial managers agree that the main goal of the firm is to maximize the market value of the existing owner equity. So what is the difference between those three uh, objectives or three goals? and how could we uh, differentiate between them. That's started by profit maximization. Although profit maximization become the most commonly seated business goal, however, this type of goal suffers many disadvantages. The first disadvantage related to profit maximization it's not a very precise objective. It's not a very precise objective. What do you mean by profit this year? Do you mean accounting profits or economic profit? Do you mean uh, net income or earning per, per share? This is why it was not a very a precise objective. The second uh, disadvantage, this goal doesn't tell you what is the proper trade-off between current and the future uh, uh, profits. Yani, what is the proper range that uh, push you to determine rarely we succeeded to maximize uh, the profits or we failed to maximize uh, the profit? This is, was not clear enough. Uh, the appropriate trade-off between current and future uh, profits uh, was not clear uh, in using profit maximization as a goal for the firm. This is why uh, we switch it to the second uh, objective, which is maximizing stock value. Maximizing uh, stock value, actually, it is very accurate than the previous one. Uh, when I say my goal is to maximize the stock value, it means that it is very uh, clear for everyone. However, one of disadvantage related to maximizing stock value, it is not a proper goal for each type of corporation, particularly such a type of corporation have no traded uh, stock. Yani I could say maximizing stock value could be a very nice goal or objective for uh, what we call corporation. But imagine that your firm, it is not in a shape of corporation. It is in a shape of um, partnership or it is in a shape of solely proprietorship. Such a type of firm is they have no traded stocks. So how could you say that your goal is to maximize stock value? Actually, you don't have traded stocks. This is, uh, this is one of the disadvantage related to the goal of maximizing stock value. This is why we uh, switch it to the final uh, goal, which could be fit for each uh, type of organization, whatever uh, this organization or this business in the shape of proprietorship or partnership or corporation. Yeah, the, if you are facing solely proprietorship or you are facing partnership or you are facing corporation, we could argue that the maximizing the market value of equity is very uh, proper and the fit 
for each type of these uh, organization. This is why if you are financial manager and if someone is asking you what is the proper goal uh, that you are seeking to achieve, directly your answer is we are aiming to maximize the value of the firm or what we call it maximizing ways of its owners because this type of goal will fit to each type of business whether this business is partnership partnership or corporation this is the review uh, questions these after you finishing uh, section one two and three try to answer those questions that will help you understand the topic question number one what is the goal of financial management question number two what are some shortcomings of the goal of a profit maximization and finally what are the major uh, areas in finance in in in, in this uh, a new section we are going to discuss the relation between firm and financial market as you see imagine that we have a specific uh, firm and uh, this firm is in a need for fund yeah this firm is uh, required uh, a specific uh, fund to uh, invest in uh, a specific assets uh, b and also to have uh, current assets how this firm will fund such a type of uh, uh, asset the financial markets could be a good solution for this firm where the firm will directly to issue its uh, security a in what we call it the financial market because the financial market could be one of our solution for funding and investment of a specific firm by issuing the firm as security in this market. After we uh, uh, issue uh, a specific uh, security, and uh, this uh, security could be in the shape of uh, short term debt short uh, bonds or could be longer term debt and longer term bonds or could be in a, sh in a shape of uh, stocks after we are issuing uh, these types of security uh, the firm will obtain its required uh, fund and this fund can be used to fund a specific investment then the firm is going to run this type of asset and they will create a certain type of cash flow part of this uh, cash flow will be uh, used for uh, paying uh, taxes for the government and the rest of this cash flow will be used uh, as uh, dividends and for uh, debt payment and this figure it's a very nice uh, figure uh, as it uh, reflects uh, the relation between firm and financial uh, market if we didn't uh, uh, pay dividend or if we didn't pay debt payment or if there is something is remaining this will be again retained in a shape of retained earnings and this is a relation between the firm and financial uh, market very important uh, topic it's called cor corporate securities as contingent claim on total firm value imagine that we have a firm and this firm is actually uh, using a certain type of uh, debt 
using a debt it means that we are borrowing a specific amount of cash and we agree to pay a fixed dollar amount by a certain date but in the case of using stocks using stocks mean that the shareholder claim on firm value is the residual amount that remain after the debt holder are paid if the value of the firm is less than the amount promised to debt holders this means that the shareholders get uh, nothing but this means that we could make a rank of uh, different types of uh, securities based on a right of being if you are depend on uh, bond uh, on debt they having the first priority for paying the second priority is given to a different types of bond and the last priority is given to stock imagine that the value of the firm is yes than debt and a bond is this means that the shareholders get nothing this is why we are saying investing in stocks is more risky than investing in uh, bonds and you must be careful about different corporate securities and what is the contingent the claim on total firm value another a new section in this uh, chapter is forms of business organization actually we have we could classify business organization into three uh, different categories the first one is the soy proprietorship second one the partnership that could be further uh, divided into general partnership and limited partnership and the third type is a corporation but as we see in general business organization can be classified into three uh, types the sole proprietorship the partnership and the corporation what are a main differences uh, our advantage our disadvantage uh, our main characteristics uh, related to each one of those terms actually we could uh, differentiate between the soy proprietorship partnership and the corporation based on the following advantage and the disadvantages the uh, first one uh, we could differentiate between them based on liquidity and marketability of ownership second based on control number three based on liability number four based on continuity of existence and finally based on tax consideration because those are the main characteristics that we are going to differentiate between soy proprietorship partnership and corporation example for this let us start by uh, before we are making the difference between these three types of business organization let us uh, give you the technical uh, definition of each one of them uh, if someone is asking me what is the soy proprietorship soy proprietorship actually it is a business uh, owned by one person and operated for his or her own profit and one person he is the owner of this firm. another uh, type of uh, business form it's a partnership partnership is a business owned by two or more people and operated for profits 
the general common form is corporation. Corporation, it's a certain type of an entity. This entity is created by law, where a corporation have the legal powers of an individual in that it can sue and be sued, make and be party to contracts and acquire property in its own name. It's an entity has its own uh, protection uh, by uh, law. If we would like to differentiate, for example, between corporation and partnership as a business form of business organization. First uh, character is the liquidity. Uh, when we give a look for a corporation, you will see that shares can easily be exchanged. Uh, because it is traded daily in the stock market and can easily be exchanged. But in the partnership, it's not. Uh, it, it's based on some substantial restriction on such a type of trade. So we could say that the liquidity in a corporation is better than the liquidity of partnership. Because if you would like to convert uh, stocks into cash, it's more easier in a shape of corporation than in partnership. Uh, the second characteristics is based on uh, voting rights. Voting rights. Voting rights, I and mean, by law, if you are holding a share, you have a right uh, to vote. So usually each uh, share gets one vote. But uh, this is not in the case in the partnership. In the case of general partnership, uh, almost the general partner is in charge. And, uh, and in some situation, the limited partners may have some voting rights. Based on taxation in corporation, Actually, it's a double, and you are going to buy uh, two times uh, a taxation. One as a firm, and one as an owner of this firm, so it's a double. But in the case of partnership, they are going to pay taxation, and they are paying taxes on distribution. If there is a distribution of profits, there is taxation, otherwise it's not. Uh, regarding a reinvestment and uh, dividend uh, payout, this is uh, based on a decision of the board of directors. So it's a broad latitude because reinvestment or dividing dividends uh, on investors, paying dividends to investors, it's based on a decision of the board of directors. But in the case of partnership, all net cash flow is distributed to partners. Regarding liability, in the case of corporation, it's limited liability because it has its own entity. But in the case of partnership, it's unlimited liability. So in the case of bankruptcy, they are going to go to your private money and using it to pay obligation of the firm. But this is not uh, the case in uh, limited uh, liability. Finally, continuity corporation is uh, or has per perpetual life. Yeah, it is existed to continue, but in the case uh, of partnership, in most of cases, it has limited life as it is uh, ended uh, 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 by uh, the death of one of uh, the partners.
This uh, section we are going to discuss one of the very important topic affecting corporation as a business uh, form. This uh, uh, problem is called the separation of ownership and uh, control. Such a type of separation and the control, it's existed because in any corporation you could find manager and owner. Owner who are holding shares and stocks in this firm and managers who are running uh, the main activities of this firm. In general, managers when they are seeking to uh, support the main activities uh, of the firm should be directed for achieving the interests of owner. But what is happening in most of cases, you could find certain type of conflict between managers and owners. Managers are seeking to achieve their safe interests rather than the interests of owner and this is known uh, in the theory uh, as agency problem. You have agency problem, uh, it's called an agency, uh, in, the, in the agency theory, uh, it raises in corporation because of separation uh, of ownership and uh, control, sometimes it's called principal agent problem. Principal agent problem. Principal refer to owners, agent refer to managers. Because of separation of ownership and the control, you could find such a type of problem which is agency uh, problem. In some situation, board of directors could be a one of important role in decreasing uh, such a type of conflict uh, between uh, ownership and control, but according to many uh, studies in this uh, area, uh, uh, the existence of board of directors didn't help a lot to solve uh, such uh, problems. Therefore, many studies try to think to how we could control the managerial behavior. How could we reduce the existence of agency problem? How could we reduce the conflict of interests between managers and uh, owners? First, first uh, uh, way, our first solution, that shareholders are voting for the board of directors who are in turn hiring the management team. You but through the control of the board of directors, maybe we could succeed to control the conflict of interests between managers and owners. Also, uh, they suggested to use Contracts. Contracts can be carefully constructed as an incentive uh, for reducing such conflict of interest uh, between managers and uh, owners. However, uh, they, uh, we, uh, we found that these endeavors were not successfully uh, helpful in reducing such a conflict of interests between managers and the owners. This is why uh, we have a new trend nowadays. It's called the implementation of corporate governance rules and regulation. The existence of corporate governance rule and regulation can be a, a very important role in reducing the conflict between managers and uh, owners pushing them to consider the interests of owner as well as their own interests.
the last uh, section of this uh, lecture we are going to give you a small hint about financial markets however this part we are going to discuss in details in in chapter 2 in this uh, section we uh, could classify the financial market into primary market and secondary market what is the main difference between primary market and secondary market number one primary uh, market it's a market that could be used when a corporation is looking to issue a security for the first time and yani if we would like to publish security for the first time this will be done in the primary market and this process will be done either by using what we call public offering or by what we call a private placement what is the difference between them public offering and we are going to say a specific issues for the first time for everyone in a market everyone has a right to buy such a type of security but private placement it's a type of process that we are seeking to issue a security for the first time for a specific ETA uh, or for a specific investor or for a specific group of investor and this is called private uh, placement but in this way primary market it's referred to the original say of securities by government and operation but the secondary market it's a market where we use it to trade existed security it's involve the sale of used security from one investor to uh, another such a type of uh, market could be done either through exchange uh, uh, market or but or could be done uh, over uh, the counter in a dealer uh, market but the main difference between primary market and secondary market it's a market where we use the market for issue security for the first time but in the secondary market it's a market where uh, we use it to uh, trade existed security or use the security as you see this figure actually give you the main difference between primary market and secondary uh, market as you see primary market it's a market where the trade will be done for the first time for issuing a security for the first time between firms and investors the firm is going to issue stocks and bonds for the investors and they are going to receive the, man, the money that will be used for funding its investment this will be done in the primary market after the security has been issued any further trade on this security it will be done in the secondary market as you see in the secondary market we have two investors Bob and Sue if they would like to trade existed security this will be done between them where bob is going to sell securities for sue and then bob is going to receive the money for this and this process will be done in the secondary market uh, you must take into consideration that 90 90 percent of the most common market existed is the secondary market uh, uh, every week Thanks for your attentions and for any questions. Wishing for you all the best and see you inshallah in the coming lecture. All of my bestest for you, Dr. Tamer Shahwa.